This lesson will show you how to read guitar tab. So first we're going to start with the strings here. This is your low E string, and this is your high E string. On the tab this is a capital E, and on the tab this is a small E. So we have our E string, A string, D, G, B, and high E string. And now you can see how the strings are related to on the tab. When you play a string open on a tab, it's represented as a zero. So I'm going to pick the low E string four times, four zeros, then the A string, D, G, B, and little e. When you fret a string, it's represented as a number in tab. The first fret of the E string is a 1, third fret is a 3, fifth fret is a 5, etc. Now if you're playing two notes at the same time, I could hold down the seventh fret of the A string here and the fifth fret of the E string here. That gives us an A power chord. And if I play those two at the same time, they're represented on top of each other. And the tab. Here's another tab example where I go to the 12th fret on the E string, pick that with a downstroke, then left up, open E string. One, two, three, four. You can see how that looks on the tab with some 12th frets followed by open strings. Now we're going to see how a chord looks on tab, both with a chord diagram and the tab. First we'll start with a D chord, holding the 2nd fret of E, 2nd fret of G, 3rd fret of B. Play an open D string with that. That's a D chord, you can also see the chord diagram for that. And on the chord diagram, it's also showing us which fingers we're using. Index finger is 1, middle finger is 2, ring finger is 3, pinky is 4, and the thumb is a T. Another example is an E major chord, second frets of the D and A strings, first fret of the G. see both the tab and the chord diagram for that. Now we're going to look at some guitar techniques. We'll go up to the seventh fret here. We're going to do some hammer-ons. What that means is you pick the fret once and then you use your middle finger to hammer on to the ninth fret. So I'm picking the seventh fret of the D string, hammering to the ninth fret. see there's only one pick there. You have to hammer onto that string hard enough to give a loud sound. Now the next technique is a pull-off. I'm going to pick the ninth fret, and as I let go I'm going to pull to sound the seventh fret. So hammer on, seven to nine, pull off nine to seven. You can also do a hammer-on pull-off combination, which means I'm going to pick the 7th fret, hammer on to the 9th fret, pull off to the 7th. All in one pick. Now if you do those fast enough, you get what is called a trill. Let's look at some trills here, starting on the 8th fret on the G string. I'm going to hammer between 8 and 10. Go to the B string. I'm going to hammer between 8 and 11. And then the high E string, 8 and 11. We can 
also do hammer-ons and pull-offs to open strings here. On the B string I'm hammering on, I'm first I'm picking an open B string, then hammering on 0, 3, 5, so one pick, then a re-pick. And on the E string I'm pulling off 530. One pick. One pick for every three notes. The next technique we're going to look at is tremolo picking. I'm going to start by holding the fourth fret on G here. And what tremolo picking really means is, is you're picking as fast as you can, or pretty fast, using down up alternate picking. technique of vibrato starting on the fourth fret of G. And what vibrato means is you'll pick the string and then you'll kind of shake it to give it that singing quality. You can have soft vibrato like that or you can make it wide vibrato. So here's soft and subtle and here's wide vibrato. take a look at palm muting. What palm muting is, is you're using your picking hand palm to mute the sounds of the strings. So instead of having an open E string sounding like this, I'm going to rest the palm about on the bridge here and get a sound like this. No palm muting, palm muting. And this works for the fretted notes of course too. Third fret, fifth fret, seventh fret, eighth fret, So we could also mix palm mutes with non-palm mutes. I'm going to hold the 7th fret on the A string, the 9th fret on the D string. That's an E power chord there. Play some palm muted low E strings. And then non-palm muted power chords. Practice palm muting on all of your strings. Now we're taking a look at some simple string bending, starting at the 9th fret on the G here. We're going to do a half bend, and so here's what the 9th fret sounds like, and here's what the 10th fret sounds like. So we're going to bend up to that note on the 9th fret, usually using your other fingers on the string to help bend. So we have this, 9, 10, we want to hear, that's a half bend there, we're bending up a half step to the pitch of the 10th fret. Now we're going to do a full bend, which will sound like the 11th fret on the G, and also the same note is also on the 7th fret on B. So we're bending to this note. And there it is, full bend. And you can check that by holding down your 7th fret on the B here. Same note. The final technique we'll look at here is finger tapping, which means your fret hand finger, either your index or your middle finger usually, you're going to be tapping with, which means you hit the string hard enough to make a sound. I'm hitting the 15th fret on E here, and then pulling off to the 7th fret on E, and when I pull off, I use that ring finger to hit the 10th fret on E as a hammer on. And the taps are represented as a T in tab. I'm doing some at the 15th fret here, then moving up to the 17th fret. 